The Middle East holds no easy answers, never has. It is unclear at this point what will ensure Israel's safety and how that safety can be balanced with the rights and needs of the Palestinians. But I do think there's a little bit too much of a binary focus in this country when viewing the conflict. Some of the events are bizarre. Jewish people are afraid in America in a way that I've never seen. Talking about changing their names, do we need to get guns, should the kids not be in school? Because of what they see online and on college campuses, which are supposed to be all about tolerance, especially these days, right? And except they're allowing intolerance of Jewish people. Slow down. Now, we have to think about this for a second, okay? They are allowing people to protest against a minority group using some of the most horrible suggestions. Imagine any campus allowing signs of ridding the world of black people or of gay people. That would never happen on a college campus, and that's a good thing. But not with Israel, even though Jewish people are only 2% of this country. Now, of course, Israel is unique, for better and worse. They are the little guy who is stronger than their enemies, or at least they have been in the past. So they are at once seen as David or Goliath, depending on your take. They're also seen by many, and this is controversial, but I do believe this is part of the equation. Many people who are protesting against Israel and Jewish people in America see Jewish people as just more white people. And as such, they are part of an empowered majority. So there is no fear of bigotry against them. But that's not true when it comes to Jewish people. They're not just other Caucasians. The world has seen that too many times of how there can be a bloodlust for taking Jewish life. However, all that binary controversy, which I guess should not come as a surprise here anymore, everything is looked at through the lens of division. We are addicted to grievance. But there is something being missed in all of this focus on limiting the right and wrong analysis and who should do what to just Israel when it comes to Palestine's welfare. Where is the inclusion of the Arab community in this analysis? For all the talk of Arab brotherhood and Arab states condemning Israel and encouraging uprisings and basically holy war against them, the same countries, even those bordering Palestine, offer no solutions for the Palestinians other than erasing Israel, no safe haven for Palestinians even now, and barely any humanitarian aid. Did you know that? Shouldn't it matter? Did you know that over 20 percent of Israel's uh, population is Arab and Palestinian, Palestinian or other Arabs, however you want to look at it? Why would Israel have so many Arabs, <clears throat> specifically Palestinians, in its population if it wanted to kill them all? Why would they allow so many? Jewish people have no similar footprint, by the way. Most of the 15 million or so live in Israel or here in the United States. No Arab country has been welcoming to them. There is no burgeoning Jewish population in Syria or Egypt. They were chased out of most places. That's why there was a move to give them a homeland. Now, of course, Israel has a special connection to Palestine because they share territory and there's been a lot of aggression. But why have the Arab neighbors been so slow to help their brothers? Syria, Egypt, Iran, which, as we know, is pulling all the strings, right? The elephant in the room is Iran. What is going to be done about them? But all of these countries, including Iran, say no to refugees. Why? Perhaps it's because they don't want to help perceived efforts to remove Palestinians from their land. Or... Maybe they just don't want any more Palestinians. The Brotherhood breaks down pretty fast once it's not a simple matter of taking sides against Israel. Even now, Egypt, very slow in allowing aid through or allowing anybody to come onto their land. They won't even allow media to get through to report. Now, some there suggest that Israel is pressuring them 
to refrain from doing those things. Is there proof of that? To the contrary, the prime minister of Egypt just said they would risk millions of lives to maintain their sovereignty and not be compromised by any fallout from this conflict. Whose lives are they referring to, if not Palestinian lives? And even if they're not going to allow their brothers and sisters to come to their much more resourceful lands, the least the surrounding Arab states could do is provide desperately needed humanitarian aid, right? We're talking about some very wealthy countries, right? Especially relative to Palestine. Look at the graphics of who is helping Palestine. First on the list, America, of course. Not that this will quiet any of the calls that the country is assisting in a genocide. Top donors to the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in 2022. Germany, EU, Sweden, Norway. Where are the Arab states? Where are all the oil economies? Norway is ahead of Saudi Arabia, one of the richest places on the planet. Look what they're offering up. 27 million. The Saudis spend more on the, you know, on wealthy, on, on, on vehicles, on luxury goods than they do on helping their Arab brothers and sisters. Look at this. Number eight, number 20, 28, 37, 45, barely in the top 50. And look at the paltry amounts from these countries. You don't even see Egypt or Iran on the list. I wonder why. Even the UAE is barely represented. What's the point? It is very simple and, and very appealing and satisfying in our grievance culture to make it simple, pick a side. I'm pro-Palestinian. There's no reason to not want the violence to stop. But it's not that simple. There's no reason to want less suffering, to have a better solution going forward. But it's never proven that simple. And clearly, it can't be just for Israel in the doing. It has to be a broader solution. It has to be broader right now. Why would Israel be more responsible for the welfare of Palestinians than any of the Arab countries surrounding Palestine? How come nobody asks that or what Hamas did with the billions in aid that they've received in the last 20 years? Where is the proof of it in that society? Look, I get why it is so satisfying to think you're taken up for the little guy. But if your goal is not just grievance, but to get to a better place, you better open the aperture of who you see as players in this situation. Because there are a lot of people getting a free ride on your animus. That's all directed at Israel. When they can't solve this situation in themselves, unless they want to decide not to exist, wanting to stop the violence is obvious and it is virtuous. But the idea that Israel is the only country that can get it done is not only doing a disservice to the reality, but is excusing the responsibility and supposed righteousness of all these other Arab countries. They are just too happy to sit by and hope that Israel is weakened by the situation and they are getting their way. You have to ask, if you care, why are the Arab states not doing more to help the suffering that they say matters so much? Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.